Hello and welcome to this tutorial for how to make a little Christmas stocking tree ornament. You'll find the free pattern in the description box below. Print it out, cut out the shapes and then you'll need to cut those out of hexiform if you're using hexiform like I've got here and you'll also need your felt pieces for the lining or you can just use regular paper. I also have some kits for sale which has everything pre-cut except for the fabric so you get the hexi form and the felt and everything like that. So I'm just basting my shapes just as you would for regular English paper piecing. So I've just put a dab of the Soline glue on and I'm just going to cut it out of my fabric with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Press lightly around the edges to smooth the curve and get a really nice edge. I'm just adding some glue here now to stick the little dog ears that stick out at the sides just to stick them back and then they're out of the way and it's nice and neat. Now I'm basting my diamonds and the key with diamonds is to just do them all the same. So if you're going around clockwise like I am, do them all clockwise or the other way, it doesn't matter, just do them all the same. And that way the little dog ears, little flaps at the top and the bottom of the diamond will all be facing the same way and that will make stitching them together much easier. So as you can see here I did all mine the same, so all the tops are pointing to the right and all the bottoms are pointing to the left. And now it's time to stitch them together. And they just slot together, those little dog ears overlap and you'll have no problem stitching those together. So once I've sewn two diamonds together, I then sew two more to give me four, and that's half of the star, and then I'll sew another four together to give me two halves. And this is the way I like to sew these eight pointed stars together, creating two halves and then putting both halves together. And I find this way the seam lines match up really nicely and it's better than going all the way around, especially for the points in the middle. And it can get a bit thick there with all those dog ears, but just try and avoid them. Don't worry about them, push them out the way. Just focus on the lines of your diamonds and you should be absolutely fine.
Baste your triangles and your squares in the same way that you basted the other shapes and then you want to whip stitch them into place. So the triangle, the first one is going at the top in between the two diamonds and then the squares are going in the four corners with the triangles in between. And just whip stitch them together. I'm just trying to avoid those little dog ears, those flaps of fabric when I sew. I'm, I'm getting my needle right into the corner but I am angling it so that I don't go through that flap of fabric. We're going to push those out of the way later on and put a dab of glue on it if it's in the way. And just repeat that process with the remaining triangles and squares. So once they've all been stitched into place, you now need to attach the toe to the back of the stocking and also to the front of the stocking. And then it's time to attach your star in the square to the bottom half of your stocking front. So just line up the corners and stitch along that lovely straight seam. The next step is to join the two halves of the stocking together, but before I do that I'm just adding some glue to the little flaps of fabric and I'm just pushing them to the back to get them out of the way. I'm using hexiform so I'm leaving all of that in, but if you've used paper shapes this is now the time to remove those paper shapes, give your piece a press making sure those seam allowances are still turned under and then you'll be ready to sew the two halves together.
I'm placing both halves together with the wrong sides together because I'm going to do a decorative stitch to join them both together. You could of course sew them together in a different way but I like this, it's nice and easy and it looks really good. I'm just using these little clips to hold the two pieces together and I'm lining up all the key points and making sure that the toes line up together, that the heels line up together and the top. If they don't quite match you can manipulate it a little bit, it does have a little bit of give in it but it should be fine. So I'm doing a blanket stitch to join them together, so I just start at the top and I'm using some decorative thread, some sparkly metallic thread. So as you can see I'm just taking my stitch from the front to the back and I'm making sure that the working thread is behind my needle and that way it creates a bit of a loop. So when you make your stitch, if you see that the thread is in the front, just put it behind your needle. It almost feels like you're knitting when you move the thread behind the needle like that. But it just creates this lovely effect of the stitch going across at the top and it joins the gaps together. So it's just a really simple blanket stitch. It's quick, it's fun and it looks good. I'm just trying to evenly space them out. And I'm going to go right the way around the whole of the stocking but obviously leaving the top open. Now that's done it's time to attach the ribbon and I actually do this without even cutting my thread here it's still attached from doing the blanket stitch and I take my ribbon and I just make a stitch through both ends of the ribbon and then secure it in position along that seam line in the corner there just make a couple of stitches just to secure it and it will be stitched over again later on. So this is really just to tack it in place. Next job is to whip stitch the two halves of the lining together. So just line them up, start whip stitching about an eighth to two eighths of an inch in from the edge and don't worry too much about your stitches because they just won't be seen they'll be hidden on the inside Once that's done, place your lining inside of your stocking and just line up those seam lines that are on the outer edges to get everything nice and straight. And then what I like to do, because it can be a little bit lumpy on the inside, I just poke it with a pen, I'm using the sew line glue pen, just poke it and get everything nice and flat inside. And then I'm just hand stitching around the edge at the top to secure the felt lining to the outer part of the stocking. I'm just making some tiny stitches. Again, I'm not too worried about what these look like. They're on the inside, they're with very fine thread, and I am going to add some decorative trim in a minute, and I think that covers anything up anyway. 
I'm just making sure that I don't stitch right through to the front. I'm just catching the fabric on the inside, just a tiny bit to secure it. It's important to remember to leave a little gap by the ribbon if you're going to add some decorative trim because you can poke the ends down there in between the felt lining and the outer part of the stocking. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'm just adding this braid and I'm doing it by using some metallic thread. I'm catching the top edge of the stocking with my needle and I'm trying to go between the two parts of the braid rather than stitch right the way through it because that can be really tough. And if the braid untwists, I'm just twisting it back again with my fingers and it all looks fine. So it's much easier doing this than trying to actually go through the braid itself. So here is the completed stocking and you can see I poked the ends of the braid down between the felt lining and the outer part where the ribbon is. So all the ends are down there and you can't see them and that's it, it's all complete. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial, I really hope that you give it a go. Remember it's a free pattern that you can download and the link is below. Thanks so much, see you soon, bye!